We have become more influenced by the world than influencing the world. Why? Because his coming has been made. And we got to a place where now we are just standing. And the Bible says these women slumbered and they fell asleep. But who knows that God is merciful? Who knows that, that when even we... See, the groom could have forgotten about them because they fell asleep and they could no longer wait. And he could have said, I'm not coming for them no more because they have fallen asleep. But the Bible said, again came a voice. Again they heard a sound that this groom was on its way. And it was time for them to prepare themselves. And this is where I want to capture your attention here before we go. The Bible said that at the second time that they heard the sound, they all woke up and everybody began to trim, trim the, 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 the little lamp and they began to trim it to get ready. But that in the tent that were there, there were five of them who prepared themselves with an extra dosage of oil in their vessel. And there was another five who had run out of what they had. There were five who were ready and they decided to put it into the lamp so they could keep the journey. But the other five told themselves, they said, well, you know what? Um, let me just go ask my sister, hey, you know, you're the Holy Ghost Spirit one, you know, can you pray for me? You're, just get your anointing to me and God will take care of my sin. You know, oh, I see this man of God is moving very quickly, so I'm just going to walk close to the man of God. And as long as people see me walking really close to the man of God, my sins are going to be covered. It's okay. Oh, you know what? I sing in the choir, so I don't really need to be praying and fasting and seeking the face of God. Who does that? I sing in the choir. As we sing, they see we are anointed, so I am covered. The five foolish virgins thought that they could connect themselves to what the five wise ones had done. They thought that they could lean on somebody else's grace. They thought that they could lean on somebody else's anointing. The saddest thing right now is we are leaning on the church too much. You are fornicating, but as long as you think I'm going to church on Sunday, it's okay. God still knows me. No, you are fornicating. You are living in adultery, but you're saying as long as I sing in a choir, it's okay. No, you're living in adultery. You are lying, you are cheating, you are saying, no, it's okay. I preach and I minister. No, you are living in sin. We have begun to lean too much on the church. And you know how I know? The only time we are filled with the glory of God is on Sunday. When was the last time you were walking on the street and the glory of God just fell over you and you forgot the glory? When was the last time you were sitting in your office, you were working, and as you were just working, you didn't even realize it, but you were already in tongues, far in the spirit. We have begun to lean on the church. We have begun to lean on our friends. We have begun to lean on our pastor. Oh, my pastor preaches repentance. I'm okay. I'm covered. I'm in the church. I'm part of House of Grace. I'm part of New Covenant. I'm part of Breath of Life. I'm part of Africa. Whatever it is. So as long as I'm appointed to something, we are leaning on that. Amen. Amen. Not understanding precious people of God that there is a season, there is a time that is coming. But there will be nothing to lean on anymore. The five foolish virgins, they thought that they could lean on what the other had because they never prepared themselves with the road. But they quickly realized that when they tried to lean on that, that the wise one said, no, I gotta make my way. We need to go ahead and figure it out by yourself. But by the time they went to figure it out, it was too late. Listen, tonight I did not come that I may hurt you. And if I hurt you, I only hope that I've hurt you to repentance. If I offended you, I could apologize, but because it's the word of God, it's just okay to say ouch. We need as a generation to wake up. There is a voice that is crying out to the people of God and is saying, get ready. It is saying, get ready. And let me tell you something. I was talking to somebody and they were asking, you keep yelling revival on Facebook and everything you do, you keep yelling revival. Why do you keep yelling revival? What are you going to do? You're going to go out on the streets and cause revival as a misunderstanding of scripture. Revival is never for the people. Revival is for the church. The people cannot be impacted by what they don't know. But when the church awakes and stands on this position, it is transformed and it can then impact the world. 
The revival that God is breaking loose right now is not a revival in the street, but it is a revival inside of the church. He is calling the heart of man to come back to him in purity and in truth. He is calling this generation to stand and to stop compromising, to stop doing things because everybody else is doing it, to stop just accepting things because everybody else is accepting it, but to stand on the truth, to stand on purity, to stand on the word of God, because once you begin to stand, then the Lord will begin to empower and he will begin to fill and make you effective on the streets. It's time for a revival. It's time that we be revived in the things of God. Remember when you first gave your life to God. Remember how nobody had to ask you to fast? Remember how you were so eager to say, man, this week I'm fasting. People would ask you, why are you fasting? I just want to be in the presence of God. You had no purpose. You had no demand. You just wanted to be in His presence. Remember the times where you knew that church was starting at 11 and you would be already there by 10.30 and people would say, why are you here so early? You say, I just don't want to miss. In Jesus' name. The next time you go for them to check you out, They will let you know that they can no longer find what they have found. And when that happens, I want you to get our number so that you can testify unto the Lord. So that the people of God may know that they serve a healing God. Amen. Cancer will not affect your life. You are healed. The Lord bless you. They always inspire him. I see that when he was a little boy, everybody would always tell you that your son would grow up to be somebody great. The enemy has heard and tried to hinder that to stop it from coming to pass. But because you come into the house of God, he will be fine. Praise the Lord. He will fulfill the Lord that God has purpose for him to fulfill. Don't worry about the kidney failure. Come back to God. Sincerely, purely back to God. Your heart and bring him back to the Lord. You too. Just come back to the Lord. If you have a church, go back to that church. Continue to serve God in that church. Be faithful in that church. And in that church, you will testify that the hand of God has intervened in his life. May God bless you.
one through. Stretch out your hands. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Let's be healed right now. Father, I cause every organ to come back to place now. Father, I cause it to come back to place now in the name of Jesus. I speak healing to your daughter of God. Every complication, I cancel it now. In Jesus' mighty name, every complication, I cancel, I cancel, I cancel, I cancel, I cancel it now. In the name of Jesus. My Lord, lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Father, we thank you for deliverance power. We thank you for deliverance power. There is something that the enemy has played. There is people who have placed something against you to hinder you health-wise, to just block you health-wise, to block you health-wise. They, they, they have spoken against you, to block you health-wise. I'm sorry for these terms, gentlemen. You may not like to hear this, but your menstruation cycle was affected because of this and you've had issues and struggles because of this, because the enemy has tried to touch you. There's someone that stems from your mother's side who had spoken against you, trying to hinder what would happen in your life. But the Lord right now is delivering you in the name of Jesus. That issue that coming, you will have it no more in Jesus' name. I see the hand of God that is coming over your life right now and is causing that pain that pain, everything that they had deposited. I see the hand of God that is entering and that is causing everything that has been deposited to come out. In the name of Jesus, Father, deliver it now. In Jesus' mighty name. Every illegal deposition, I command it to loose now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Father God. Everything that was deposited, oh Lord, supernaturally, Father God, we cause it to be removed now. In Jesus' name, now, in the name of Jesus. Father, let your supernatural hand, oh God, deliver her now, in Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, the pain to go in the name of Jesus. And Father, I command everything to come back in order. In Jesus' name, oh Lord, the seed that was planted, we will build him and send it back to the pit of hell. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, we speak healing and deliverance. We speak healing and deliverance. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are welcome. The Lord bless you. Let us pray. Father, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Sister Monica, just before I pray, sister, come. Please come, my sister. This is my young sister. I love so much. She is such a blessing to the body of Christ. I am so privileged to have you here tonight. The Lord bless you. This is what the Lord wants me to tell you. Your season of being in the secret is about to come to close. God is about to open up doors. But now man will see what he has been doing with you in the secret. There has been a season of time when God has been forcing you into a specific place of consecration. You desired to kind of hide yourself away because you wanted to go deeper. You felt the push to go deeper in the Lord. You felt a strong push for that. And now the Lord is saying the time has arrived and he is about to launch you back up. He's going to open you back up. You guys have a conference coming up soon, right? In the process of that conference, somebody will confirm what I have said to you that you may know that the Lord has truly spoken. And in the midst of that conference, you will see that something tremendous has changed. You will sense the presence of God like never before. You will have a specific experience with angels in your midst as you will dwell in a place of worship here. You'll be in the midst of anybody, but you will see that angels are just surrounding you. And as if God will open your eyes to see his glory from a tangible place. And from that moment on, your life will never be the same. May the Lord bless you. Father, thank you for your people. We give you alone the glory, Father. We bow and we say thank you. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for the breakthroughs. Thank you for the deliverance. Thank you. Thank you for those who have brought from every corner in this city. Father, my prayer, oh God, that you may revive them. 
Revive them back to you. Revive that life of intimacy. Revive that life of purity. Bring them back to you, O oh God. Bring them back to you. And do that which you have purpose in your life. Jesus, we give you alone the glory. And we give you alone the honor. Father, bless the return of your people. I pray for traveling mercy. I pray, Father, that you be blessed in their churches. Bless their pastors. Bless their respective church. Cause it to go forward.